we have uh, kind of a tumultuous time now, and some folks are a little unclear about what to do with the next move of their real estate life. Well, uh, let's put a little perspective uh, to the marketplace. Uh, traditionally, real estate goes in 10-year cycles. And the first year was last year, uh, year 2022. That was the adjustment year. This year, 2023, and into the year 2024, the market will solidify, and then it will go up for seven years. It's happened that way uh, every 10 years. I've been in the business 47 years. This is my sixth 10-year cycle. I caught the end of one, four in between, and this is the start of the next 10-year cycle. So uh, it does follow these trends. And what happened last year during the uh, adjustment year is that uh, with we came off historically low uh, interest rates, pandemic uh, lo low level interest rates of approximately three uh, percent. The mark, uh, the economists were forecasting we'd go up to four and a half percent interest by the end of 2022. Well, in fact, we went up to seven percent. And what it did is it uh, backed up all the uh, multiple offer situations. Therefore, there wasn't the price support for premium pricing above the market price uh, because those multiple offers took it above list price. So that came off, and that was the adjustment year. This year, we're back to a strong uh, level of sales activity intensity for new listings. Homes are selling, especially the more affordable and mid-price ranges. And uh, uh, that's, that's kind of the, uh, the backdrop to where we are. So um, some of our um, buyers and sellers are sitting back because they're thinking there's going to be another crash. So when we try to explain to them that this is a normal cycle and that we're not expecting a crash, um, what words of wisdoms would you have to those folks that are, are sitting out because they're waiting for the worst to happen? Well, this, um, uh, this adjustment is so unique unlike any other one I've been involved with. Because the adjustment this time, although we are going through higher interest rates of, uh, and you know the Fed Reserve is trying to squash down inflation, get inflation out of the markets, uh, what we're seeing right now, because the delta between a lot of buyers and those that refinance closer to 3%, with mortgage rates now up around 6.5%, they're just not bringing their homes on the market in the normal sequence. Uh, what's moving the market today, of course, is life events, mainly around jobs and family, and also those with big equity uh, in their homes. They're repositioning their homes right now today because the interest rates don't affect them as much. Uh, so with that as a backdrop, you know, there's 35% fewer homes coming on the market than normal. Uh, and that's creating a, uh, so there's no oversupply of listings. So although premium pricing came off because the multiple offers went away, uh, after that, we're back to a strong market, which is price support, especially in the more affordable and mid-price ranges. And then in the luxury price points, sellers need to position their home to be the next home to sell. So is it possible that we could have the beginnings of another seller market happening this summer because of the low inventory? We're already seeing this uh, in the metro market areas of so Portland and Seattle uh, and, and, and you know, close to the major job centers. We're already back up to an extreme frenzy market, multiple offers above list price markets. And uh, Alice says, you and I have chatted uh, as the major metro markets uh, heat up. Uh, it's only months away before we start to see that uh, additional sales in the lifestyle destination market areas, uh, such as Medford, Ashland, Bend, Oregon, the coast, uh, in, in, as, as an example in the state of Oregon. Um.